All right, so I'm just going to talk through these two AP problems here. Um, first, uh, as we look at number three, the top one, um, we'll notice that they, they are giving um, us the explicit equation for x um, and for y, they're giving us the derivative. So we have to pay careful attention to those things. Uh, find the speed of the particle at time three. So that's the length of the velocity vector. Um, and so again, um, and the answers are, are linked online. Um, you want to be careful. Uh, they gave you the equation for x, and so you have to take the derivative of that and plug in three. Uh, they gave you the equation for y prime, so you simply plug uh, 3 into that equation that they gave you and then do the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, part B, you find the total distance traveled. Um, whoops. Total distance traveled um, is the integral of the square root of the velocity, uh, the integral of the speed, basically. Um, and so this part here is um, x prime. Um, which they found, and then y prime was given already, and so you use that formula, and of course you do the integral on your calculator. Uh, for C, it says uh, when is the tangent line horizontal, and is it moving to the left or to the right? Um, and so that's a little bit tricky. Uh, tangent line is horizontal. That will happen when, of course, the derivative is zero. And for a parametric, uh, the derivative is zero as long as the numerator is zero and the denominator is not. Um, and so you take that dy dt, set it equal to zero, you get a, a t value on your calculator, um, probably by using the graph. And just make sure that that does not make uh, dx dt zero. And of course, it does not. Um, how do you tell if a particle is moving to the left or the right? Uh, you look to see whether its uh, x-coordinate is increasing or decreasing. How do you tell if something is increasing or decreasing, whether its derivative is positive or negative? And so you plug uh, that time that we just got into the x-derivative, and you see that it's positive uh, so that it must be moving to the right. Um, D, uh, there is a point with x coordinate 5 through which the particle passes twice. Find each of the following, the values of time when that happens, the slope, um, and the y coordinate. Um, and so a lot going on here, as there often is. Um, so first, how do we find the time uh, when x is 5? You simply take the equation uh, that they gave you, uh, which was a quadratic set it equal to 5, use your graph or your uh, quadratic formula, get those time values. Um, at time 1 and time 3, you plug those into dy dt and dx dt and get the slopes. Um, the trickiest one is to find the um, y-coordinate. And so we know um, where it is at time 2. And so um, we then need to figure out where it is at one of those times. And uh, they are figuring it out at time three um, is the, the work they did. And so they basically had to see how much did the y coordinate change from time two to time three. Um, and so they, they integrate the derivative of y, which will give the net change in y, add it to where y started, and you get an amazingly simple answer of 4. Um, so that's the first one. Hopefully that one went okay. Uh, next one, we're skipping 2a because we are omitting polar area. It's not on the AP test, of course. Um, part b, um, particle moves along the curve. Um, and it's a polar curve, and this is the part that's a little tricky here. They're telling you that theta is a function of time, and so it's moving along a curve, but now we're sort of parameterizing it uh, with time. And so it says, find the time at which the x-coordinate of the particle's position is negative 1. And this, sorry, uh, this goes back to um, our relationship between polar and rectangular coordinates. We know x is r cosine theta. Um, and so we take the equation for r, multiply it by cosine theta, and then we replace theta with t squared, as they told us to. Um, and then we set this whole thing equal to negative 1, basically. And again, uh, lots of calculator stuff here. Um, we need to solve this equation. Um, and 
um, they told us we were just looking for the interval from one to two. And so presumably this equation has lots of answers, um, but we're just looking for the answer between one and two, and it's about 1.4. 1 1 Last one, um, find the position vector uh, in terms of t, find the velocity vector at a certain point. Um, and so the position vector um, that's going to be x comma y. And so we already did um, up above, we did the um, x equation. Um, so we did x equals r cosine theta. We placed theta with t squared. And so we're basically just copying that down here. Um, y will be very similar, except it's r sine theta. And so we replace r with that equation, replace theta with t squared, and then we're good to go. Um, and then once we have position, we find velocity by doing the derivative of each component. Um, and of course, again, don't forget about n deriv. You can certainly do these derivatives by hand, uh, but if they're a big mess with the product rule and the chain rule. Um, just do n deriv for each component, plug 1.5 into that derivative um, on your calculator, and you get that velocity vector, both the x and y components. Hopefully those two went okay. Let me know about any questions you might have.